What do dance and music bring to street protest? What does dancing in the streets have to do with stopping violence against women and girls? Every week on The Laura Flanders Show, we look at what it takes to shift power. This week, we're going to look at the power that comes from shifting our bodies with renowned Puerto Rican singer and social justice musician Taina Asili and playwright and activist Eve Ensler of the Vagina Monologues. In 2020, Taina wrote the anthem for One Billion Rising, the global anti-violence movement that arose rose out of V-Day and Eve's work. We met in Eve's loft on the day before February 14th, V-Day. It's all coming up on the Laura Flanders Show, the place where the people who say it can't be done take a back seat to the people who are doing it. Welcome. Aina, Eve, welcome. I'm so glad. Thank, Thank you. you for having us here at your kitchen in the um, vagina lounge here <laughs> in New York. Let's start with you, Taina. We're speaking as your anthem is mobilizing people all over the planet. How is that feeling for you as you're watching video come of people dancing? It's pretty magical. I mean, it's profoundly magical. Um, I you know, you write a song and you don't know what's gonna happen. I had a hint based on uh, the creation of the music video. Um, I had the opportunity to scrub through the amazing and immense footage of One Billion Rising's work um, uh, globally and got to see, you know, the how deep this goes and the potential. But, um, you know, when you write a song, you don't know if the rhythms and the lyrics are gonna really speak to folks. Um, already I've witnessed uh, some amazing choreography in Swaziland and Taiwan, um, you know, expressive movements happening in Thailand. And I'm just, I'm still kind of like grappling with it and, and, and thinking about what's going to come next. And, you know, um, I, I feel like this is going to really continue to move forward into um, quite uh, a powerful and expressive campaign. <laughs> Talk about One Billion Rising for people that might not yet be aware of it or have participated in it. Why is dance and movement and music such a big part of it? And I also just want to say how honored and thrilled we all are by Taina's song because it's so incredible. And already a half a million people have heard it and have passed it on and are sharing it. And it's yeah, so being, we should say within a few weeks of its release, yes, half yes. a million views. And it's being translated into numerous languages. It's being taken up by our coordinators everywhere. And it's because of the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work you did on the song. So I just want to honor that. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always this way February 13th because I just feel like the whole world is beginning to rise in the most astounding, magical ways. And some people have already begun to rise because where V-Day and One Billion Rising used to be February 14th, it now seems to be almost every day. I mean, people are just rising, but right now it's kind of the core the molten magma of the volcano, right? We're talking and, right at the yeah, eve we're of on the eve this of action that happens every year. And I just think this movement just gets more and more astounding in that it's being owned, directed, determined by people on the ground, by grassroots women, by activists, by indigenous, by farmers, by workers, by those who are rising for the earth in various places, those who are working you know, to stop mining, to stop fighting for migrant rights on borders. I mean, I'm just looking at all the various things, you know, in Mexico, they're rising to stop sex trafficking and they have for years and they've actually changed what's going on there. In, in the Philippines where there's a fascist leader, they've managed to use dance as a way of foiling the oppression because they can shut down marches, they can shut down protests, but they can't shut down dance. Dance is a form of expression. And so they are managing to do huge demonstrations with dance, yeah. 
where they're bringing all kinds of people into the movement because dance is so incredible. It, it breaks down binaries. You know, it, it, it invites us all into the equation. The first performance that you did of the song live in the streets, Taina, was in New York City outside Governor Cuomo's office as part of a protest of women workers' self-defense and a demand to do away with the sub-minimum tipped wage for restaurant workers. It was, a, it was part of a protest for one fair wage. Can you just describe that for us a little bit? Well, you know, we, we went onto the street and a, a stage was set up um, in front of the, the governor's office. It was organized um, with One Billion Rising and One Fair Wage. And there was a, a lot of energy. You know, you could feel the energy was palpable. Um, so, you know, they had um, some amazing people speak who spoke to the experiences of um, being uh, women in restaurant work and um, what, ha what those experiences are. And, um, and then they had some folks do teach some self-defense. And um, we stood next to whoever we were standing next to and got to um, engage with that a little bit. Um, and then, of course, was the music. So you had speaking, self-defense, <laughs> and then music and, and dance. And then the music. And what did that bring? What did your piece of that bring? Well, um, so we first was the um, Resistance Revival Chorus. Um, and they are an incredible group of women singers um, dressed in white and really kind of set, I think they set the energy um, as, as being almost ceremonial, you know, just really kind of creating that musical container. Um, and then some of those folks later joined me um, in singing the premiere of We Are Rising um, live. And love for our future generations. Intersectional and inclusive we come. Collective powers, houses is one. We keep it rising like the fire of the sun. We will rise like the sun. We will rise like the sun. I'll tell you for one, one for a million. I'll tell you for one, one for a million. It was exciting. I mean, even within our group of folks that were um, at the demonstration, people started dancing and moving and doing exactly what I had dreamed and intended and we had dreamed and intended for the song. And I have to say, even though that was the first live um, at, you know, performance, we kind of rolled the song out, recorded in Taiwan where we, there was this huge, huge conference of all the women who work at shelters around the world. And it was every country in the world. Domestic violence shelters. Yeah, and everybody. Violence. And it was every country in the world. And at the end, we played the song, it, just to try it out, to see how it would go. And not only was it like well received, but I mean, I think what we managed to do and what Taina brilliantly managed to do is to find a way to really include so many people's issues and what people are rising for. And it was not an easy task because our movement is so intersectional now. And so many women are there, whether they're fighting for workers' rights or migrant rights or stopping FGM or land rights. And at one point during the song, everyone was just dancing. The whole room took off. People were doing line dances through this huge auditorium and this African woman comes up to me dressed in this gorgeous thing and she's crying and she goes, oh my God, you put FGM in the song too? We're included in the song, we're included. And she was just weeping. Female gentleman. And, I, and it, I just thought to myself, this is what it means to be intersectional and inclusive. This is what it means to bring everybody's story into the music, into the dance. Well, that's what makes dance so powerful, it seems to me, because you can dance alone, but what you're talking about is collective action. Yeah. and. Even just in that, in the power of that, I think, lies a lot that's worth looking at. It, 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 obviously, it's a place you can bring people together across lots of different issues and, and movements out of their silos. They're all together in the streets. But then they catalyze something else. At least that's been my experience. There's some, some third thing emerges when two people get together and act. And who knows what the thing is that emerges when you have hundreds or thousands of people are doing it. Magic. But you mentioned some of the things that have come out of this so far. You want to rattle so, a few so many off? things have come out of this, but I just I want to say something about what you just said. I think, you know, the idea for this happened to me in the Congo because I was I had just gotten to come back to the Congo after I'd had a very very bad sickness of stage three four cancer and I looked really scary. I was bald and really skinny. I just looked like a scary old white woman, and all the w women looked at me and they were like. Oh my God. And what everyone does in the Congo when everything else fails is they dance. You know, it's just, let's dance, because that will take us through. And it does take you through. And they started to dance in this way that was just so incredibly powerful. 
And I've been obsessing about this number that one billion women in the world will be raped or beaten in her lifetime. And I looked at those women dancing, women whose insides have been eviscerated, women who have been mutilated, women who have been raped, women who have lost their babies, women who have been cut open. And I saw the power of their dancing, and I thought, OK, those women dance like that? What if a billion survivors on this planet dance like that? Do you that? remember what it did to you at that moment? I remember, Eve. We nearly lost you to that cancer. You were in a fragile state. I wouldn't have said a dancing mood. No, but I became in a dance because the thing about dance is it's transcendent. It takes us out. It takes us so fully into our bodies that we go out of our bodies. It, it, it brings you so far into the center of your being that you get launched into a higher, a higher energy. And I think that's why it's so powerful. It's yeah. so powerful because it's collective. It, it joins you with each other. It joins you with your body. And for women who've been raped, for women who, it, it gets you to love your body. It gets you to reclaim public space. It gets you to say, I have value, I have worth, I have energy, I have the right to be here with my sisters who are also claiming this space. I remember once being in a women's shelter in Northern Ireland in the early 80s, in the middle of the Troubles, in the worst possible, outside there was war, in the women's houses there was war. There they were at a club raising money for their shelter, and they start singing Gloria Gaynor. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, they, and they're up there dancing. And I saw the same thing. People who you would never have thought were in a dancing mood getting power out of dancing and dancing with each other across whatever, whatever war boundaries, war lines they were crossing. I'm glad you reminded me of that. Tina, what about you? What is you know, what's coming up for me is that I was raised in a household. My mother was a dancer. Um, my mother was a bomba dancer, which is a Puerto Rican folkloric art form. Um, it descends from our African and Taino ancestors. And um, it was used during the time when our people were enslaved um, as a way to reclaim our humanity in the face of inhumanity. So when you talk about that experience, and I recall watching that video as one of the videos that I watched, um, it was about reclaiming our humanity in the face of inhumanity, about um, reclaiming our cultural and spiritual traditions. And also these bombazos, um, as we call them, were important places where we would organize slave revolts. And one of the things that you know, I love about how I was raised is that um, I was taught that art, dance, singing, drumming are integral parts of resistance, of love, of liberation. And as Puerto Ricans, we have passed this tradition on specifically bomba and plena, but also through um, you know, salsa, hip hop, um, all of these different art forms. We have passed on this idea of using the rhythm, the dance, the body um, to resist, mm -hmm. to uplift. And that's common across many cultures, right. too. Whether I you're talking exactly. Native American ghost dances and sun dances right. or Aboriginal right. dancing or, or even the Irish Kaylee. I mean, the British, I think, tried to outlaw the dancing at one point. Right. Or Japanese dancing right. or... You, I mean, I think one of the amazing things about OBR, because it's in 180 countries, and because people are rising in sometimes very small, tiny little communities, tribal communities, or huge cities, or up in mountains or sometimes by the sea. It's all, but everybody has their own way of taking one song and adapting it and transforming it to work for their culture, mm -hmm. right? And to me, that's the miracle of humanity. Like we are so connected through the music, but also the wonderful, varied, nuanced, diverse ways that we each interpret one piece of music, mm -hmm. right? That's the glory of being a human being. So I should ask how you two started working together. How did that happen? Well, last year, Eve and I had the opportunity to uh, be a part of the Beyond the Bars conference, which was at uh, Columbia. A lot of my music is often described as being anthemic. And I went down there with that on my mind and my heart, just coincidentally, um, thinking about what does it mean for me to be a writer of anthems and wanting to be even more intentional with it. So this was the same day uh, I, I was holding this intention. I meet Eve, and Eve and I are speaking backstage, and Eve was also holding an intention of 
seeking an anthem. And then I heard her play. <laughs> and then I, and her energy, like I'm all about energy, to be perfectly honest with you. People always say to me, how do you know that you want to, you know, work with people or hire people? Or, it's just energy. And Diana's energy is so powerful and it's so rooted in art, grassroots. And I just said, okay, you just need to write our anthem. I don't know who you are. Because I, I didn't know who she was. I heard her say one song, but I know this will happen. And I, I, and I, I was right. And, um, and I have to say, because her energy is so connected to everything that One Billion Rising is, you know? And, and, so, and, and her music is so beautiful on top of that. You know? All right, check it out. We are rising. One billion, 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 billion. So that's gorgeous. I come back from watching that, totally energized and excited and up. But then I remember everything else that's in the news and that can take me down fast. You, Eve, are the fabulous, perhaps the best artist I know when it comes to holding both the, the grim and the joyous together. Um, how do you do it? Give us some tips. No, I mean, I, I think we're, we're at this incredible place, which is, I think the world has never been worse and it's never been better. It's this simultaneous strange thing. Like if, if I look at, at, at this year, we have 500 events across the United States. We have 180 countries, 29 states of India, 100 risings in Germany, 120. I mean, the world is rising. I've never seen more people-powered, women-powered, survivor-powered movements that are charging across the planet. And we are seeing racist, capitalist patriarchy at Full blast, at full blast. And I think it's because we are now about to go to boom to the next world. We're gonna we're gonna transition to and I'm I'm banking on the millions and thousands of activists who are bringing in a new vision. And I think I think we're seeing it being played out in huge many, many countries with fascist, you know, um, tyrannical leaders, including our own. We're seeing it played out with hatred of migrants. We're seeing racism like from from country to country expressed in all kinds of different ways, xenophobia. We're seeing desecration of worker rights. We're seeing- Islamophobia. Uh, Islamophobia. We're seeing the erasure of women's rights or the attempted erasure. We're, I mean, we can just, we're seeing basically rape culture being in, in, inculcated from the leaders of countries everywhere in the world where you have Duterte talking about go and like, you know, rape, a, a, take a gun to every woman vagina who's protesting or a president who brags about openly grabbing. I mean, all that's real, but there's also another reality, which is there are many, many, many people creating a whole other world. I see the importance of creating that space where we get to reclaim our joy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the midst of the de despair. Despair, I, I had a friend who's a, um, a dear activist friend of mine who, who told me that despair is important because it reminds us that we're feeling. It's actually numbness that we should be concerned about. As an artist, when I can help to transform that despair um, to a reclamation of joy, um, it's a really powerful revolutionary act. And, um, and I see that happen through music. Music has that power um, that ability to allow us to transform that emotion and move from and, and make it and, and make that stagnant energy, that weight, help us to move it, right? So I think that's what you were getting to is this idea of the movement. It's not just 
about you know bopping to a song that we like, which is important and good, but there's actually you know a psychological process that's happening. There's a spiritual process that's happening. Um, music is a vibration. It's an actual. When we talk about raise the vibration, we're not you know this is there's an actual physical vibration that's happening that affects our bodies. It affects the way that we think, the way that we feel, and allows us to have the energy to keep going. Really and, cool. and related to that is, is trauma, because what all of us on the planet are experiencing in one layer or another, one form or intensity level, is trauma. And, and particularly women's bodies and the earth, the body of the earth. And I think one of the brilliant things about dancing is that it what, what trauma does is it lodges in your cells and it now seeks to become something else, which seeks to become disease and seeks to become, and when you dance, you actually unlodge that, you free that, you free that, you free that. So what begins to happen is it becomes clean space. Mm -hmm. And I just strongly believe that all of us need to dance once a day, full boogie, full intensity, naked, or with friends, but you just need to dance. Or both. Or both, but, but, but really, <laughs> like to really allow whatever is coagulating, because it's impossible not to be traumatized right now. You can't live in this country with this predator in chief and the madness that, and the lies and the distortions and the impunity and the, without feeling traumatized. But dancing is the way to go, okay, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go, we're gonna clean this out, and we're gonna keep going. We're not gonna have that vibration that low vibration be our vibration. We're gonna live up here on a much higher vibration where the new world is gonna come through. It's not gonna come through the low vibration. And that's what art does. It raises up the vibration so that consciousness, so that vision, so that potentiality is possible. Is there anybody on our mundane political spectrum who is speaking to your raised vibration? Well, you know, I, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, Rising Majority event in D.C. with the squad, as we call them, right? Um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and um, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and um, Ayanna Presley and um, and and um, I don't want to forget ne activists from all over the nation um, who are doing this grassroots work on the ground. Um, and, you know, in that room and then also online as it was streamed, um, I certainly felt that vibration that, that um, you know, we are, we are um, thinking creatively about the world that we wish to see and, and uh, working diligently to make that happen. This is what I feel about what's happening with Bernie's campaign is he's saying this is a revolution and it's us. It's not me. And he never talks about himself. He's always talking about us. And I feel like each one of us needs to show up for that revolution and bring what it is that matters to us. I'm going to bring ending violence against women and girls, all women and girls, because that's what matters to me. But someone will, and I'm going to bring fighting to, to stop climate catastrophe. Because Bernie, is, it's not about Bernie. It's about all of us. It's about a movement. And I believe in movements. I've been in a movement now for 22 years every day. I know the power of collective work, collective sisterhood and brotherhood and, um, and non-binary otherhood, like the building of that and what that is. And I think all of us need to be engaged in that. And I think Bernie's offering us a way to be engaged in it's that. Interesting. Sometimes the candidates and Bernie Sanders especially has re have received grief for being represented by artists or you know having surrogates who are artists and cultural workers and the question is raised well is this just a celebrity thing and I guess what's interesting to me is that he is talking about a culture shift mm -hmm. and the people on his campaign are it seems to me talking about culture shift and he's shifted the culture sufficient the other people are also using that language, talking that language, speaking about structural change. He's not the only one with some of the planks on his, on his policy. Some people's policy have policy planks that he doesn't. But he is the one saying we actually have to shift culture. So it makes sense to me that a lot, a lot of culture shifters like yourselves resonate um, uh, with him. I think that's an exciting shift no matter what happens this November. And, and by the way, Bernie's already shifted the culture. Exactly. If you look what's happened in four years to the Democratic Party, how far it's moved over to the left because of yeah. Bernie. Let's be real. That revolution has pushed us. We weren't talking about any of the things exactly. we're talking about now four years ago. So this is that's, just, that's him not in office. Imagine him in office and all of us with this movement having, having a political platform. So while we talk about mass emotion, 
it can be deployed in a variety of directions. I, I can't focus in. So, I, I, so after um, the election of Trump, I wrote a song called No es mi presidente. Um, and you know, I, I often preface it before I sing and say that this song isn't about an individual, and I don't even use Trump's name in the song. This is about the power of the people. Um, and I keep my focus on the, on the positivity, on the legacy of liberation that we have, on the power and the strength that we have. And I just keep my focus there. It's not just artists with a capital A that are creative. We all, we are humans, are the creative animal. We have that, all of us have that potential inside of us. And when we allow ourselves to use our creativity, we can think about creative solutions to our world's problems. We can think about um, you know, creative ways of envisioning the world we wish to see. So my job is to focus there. And I, that's just where I gotta keep my eyes. I, I'm so with you. I, I, and I so feel that. And I also think there's a difference between mass energy around an individual and mass energy around an idea and a, and a, new, and a new idea. And I think one of the things, you know, I, I, I never get involved very much in electoral politics. I've just, it's never been, I'm, I'm about movements and people and art. And, but I think something has been getting to excite me what's happening right now. For the first time in my life, I feel like there, there's this movement that's beginning to congeal that is moving a lot of people in a brand new direction. And I want to be part of that. I want to be part of that. I want to give myself to that. And I want to serve that. Good last word, I say. Eve Ensler, Taina Asili, thank you so much for taking some time to be with us. Always today. love being with you. There's a lot more about shifting power and making change and rising vibrations at our website. Check it out. This is The Laura Flavin Show.